So with the Tesla being gone, this is the first road trip that we do in this Acura TSX in 2007 with about 224,000 miles on the clock. It's an old car, so who knows what's gonna happen. We're going to El Paso right now. My wife is with me. Right now, we're about to gas up at Costco, back to the old days, and we've been here for about maybe 10 minutes. It's gonna take us another 10 minutes to get out. Almost takes the time that it takes to charge the Tesla, but I know that this car will take me over 400 miles in range. So I'm hoping that I can get to Yuma, Arizona with this fuel tank and then fill up there and then Tucson again and maybe Las Cruces and then get to El Paso. So first stop was in Yuma. It's about 170 miles, I think. And so far so good. The car is doing great. It's about doing, it's doing about 30 miles to gallon, like 29 points something, which is not bad. We just left Yuma. So we've been on the road for about 160 miles, I think. And it's the first bigger city starting the state of Arizona. And our next stop is gonna be somewhere in Tucson. The only thing is that from Yuma to Tucson is a big stretch where there's nothing. So if my car were to break down, I really wouldn't know what to do. And I was talking to my wife yesterday before we took off this earlier today and I asked her, which car would you like me to take? The BMW or the Acura? Thinking of course that she would adopt it for the Acura because it's a much newer car. And she said, either car is old. So just cross her fingers and make sure that we get there. I just took this car because it's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit safer. I mean, relatively safer because it's got a lot of the modern features that you find on a newer car like curtain airbags, side airbags, and then dual airbags up front, and obviously ABS and all that stuff. Also has an automatic transmission, so in case my wife wanted to drive it, she could drive it because, I mean, she prefers to drive automatic. She knows how to drive stick shift, she just doesn't like driving my car. I'm just remember of remembering of the old days that all I drove was old beaters and it never stopped me from going places. So I'm gonna put this car in it's about 1600 miles round trip to wherever we're going and i hope that it makes it and i know that my cost per mileage per mile is going to be super low because this car is paid for it's at the bottom of the depreciation of depreciation so i don't mind putting in the miles because the car is a reliable car despite the fact that it's about to hit 223,000 miles and i have no phone signal so it feels kind of weird that we cannot stream music or anything. My wife just fell asleep. And I just want to take this opportunity to tell you about the transition from going from a modern electric car to this old beater. This is not my first time doing this. Uh, about 10 years ago, we sold or two cars that were financed. And for about two years, we just drove old cars. That's exactly when I bought that BMW that I drive as well. And we saw obviously a very direct connection between our financial health and the lack of car payments. But this time we didn't do it for that reason. Luckily, my wife, uh, between the time that we bought that Tesla and the time that we sold it, my wife got a promotion, she makes more money now. So it wasn't financial, but it's undeniable that I can do a lot with about $1,000 a month that I used to pay on that Tesla. So we're thinking uh, maybe home renovations, we're thinking obviously traveling. Uh, if we had the home charger, that uh, would alleviate a, a huge percentage of our experience with an, an EV. But at the end of the day, we do drive a lot of uh, weekend trips and that's where it gets annoying to have to recharge the vehicle. What car is next? Well, for now, I just think that we're gonna keep this car while it continues to be reliable. If we if we're still having too many problems with the car, then I might have to let it go because we need a reliable car. And thinking about the next car, I, I cannot deny that I'm not an SUV type of person, but having had that 2018 Lexus RX350 and then the Tesla Model Y, I can see why people like SUVs. They're very convenient, roomy, they're just practical altogether. And when I look at my choices, I wanna get a high mileage or a very efficient SUV. And that's about maybe like a RAV4, maybe a, the newest uh, CRV, the Honda CRV. They're great cars. The problem is that they come with uh, CVTs and I, all this time I've been trying to fight getting a CVT transmission because I just don't like them. But that is the reality of modern cars. They're going towards CVT transmissions because they allow the car to be more efficient. The CRV also, their hybrid systems are not as reliable as the ones on the Toyota. I mean, Toyota is the king of hybrids. Maybe, maybe even a Lexus NX. I looked at the, Lexus RX 350, the newest one, and it's very good looking. I had looked at it on videos, and I didn't like the way it looks on videos, but I saw it in person at the San Diego Auto Show, 
and it's great looking and we already had one we know what to expect this is a way more modern suv very subtle changes like typical lexus they don't go all out with the redesigns that might be an option as well it's expensive i wanted to downsize a little bit but i hope that i can fight the feeling of getting another luxury suv because they're expensive and i want to keep it around maybe below forty thousand dollars um but i'll let you know when the time comes throughout our trip i haven't turned off the car unless i absolutely have to do it i think i did it in yuma just because i was gonna gas up and i haven't gassed up in tucson but right now we're waiting for our sushi order and i just left it running because it's an old car and if it's running already no need to uh, risk not being able to start it again dogs have to eat and then they have to poop and it's a never ending story halfway there and gas gets cheaper as we keep driving eastbound which is great and let me show you what i've been loving about this car so far i have a range of 262 miles left and i've driven 164 miles so if you combine those two numbers we're looking at a range of, of over 400 miles which is great we are in las cruces the gas is 385 which should be about an hour away from our destination notice how we're in the middle of nowhere and gas is cheap compared to california so i'm loving it the car is doing right now in this last leg at about 28 miles to the gallon which is pretty good am i tired i'm starting to get tired i've been on the road for about 10 hours and we're about an hour away from the destination it's past midnight right now and i'm starting to get a little bit tired and right now based on my driving habits for the last leg i'm supposed to get 484 miles of range and i've been driving about well it says there 10 miles so it's likely that i could break the 500 mile mark if i drove more conservative but i am doing about 75 miles per hour which is the speed limit here maybe a little bit faster maybe 78 miles per gallon and that's when the mileage takes the toll but i'm okay with it so look at this be amazing if I could break the 500 mile range mark. After 13 hours on the road, we were finally in El Paso. It took a little bit longer because we stopped for dinner, then we stopped to let the dogs take a walk a couple of times, and uh, we were just taking our time. Uh, not bad, the miles per gallon is about, I'll say high 20s, so I'm gonna have to throw real numbers, but I'm really happy with the way this car did for 750 miles, not bad. I'm about to drive home. It's 7.32 local time. And this time, these are gonna be my companionships for my trip. My wife staying back and flying back to San Diego. Um, wish me luck. The car had a very lazy start. It's very cold here. Maybe around 37, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it had a very lazy start. So I'm hoping that it doesn't leave me stranded because of the electrical issues that it's had. Uh, so far, I haven't had an incident since I removed the Bluetooth module. And I hope that that was the issue so that we can all go home happy. I don't like this type of car wash because you can get some wheel damage from scratching the wheel against the rail. But that's a surprise to me and I don't like this contact car wash. I like this the water pressure ones. Depending on how I edit this video, I might have mentioned already how much I've spent over the purchase price of this car. I bought the alternator, the battery, the tires, um, floor mats, and what else? I'm sure I'm forgetting something. The owner told me that he addressed some issues with this car. He had already replaced the alternator once and he also did the AC compressor. It is a known issue with this, the Hondas of these years is the AC compressor that when it fails, it has catastrophic effects on uh, the rest of the, for example, it ruins the condenser. So it is a very expensive repair if you don't address the AC compressor. So he fixed that, so it's good. I don't have to deal with it. He also replaced the rotors and he did like a comprehensive brake job. 
So those issues I don't have to deal with. I have noticed a particular sound coming from what it seems the power steering pump is very loud, kind of like the Fords, the old school Fords used to sound with the hydraulic power steering pump, which this one has. So it's kind of loud and I noticed that on this drive but i had i think i had noticed it ever since i replaced the alternator and it's something that i can replace myself i haven't done it in a long time but i should be able to find a video and do it myself just to save money and it's because it's kind of a hobby it does have a laggy start it, it sounds like it's not gonna start and then it starts i don't know if getting a bigger battery with more amps will help that issue it's very entertaining believe it or not because honestly if it were to break down i, I would just tow it home I mean, it's gonna cost me a Norman a leg, but it's still cheaper than buying a new car. So far, with what I spent on the car, I haven't even covered the sales tax of the prior two vehicles that I purchased. So to me, this is cheap. 375 for premium in Texas. I wonder if I could take some of this cheap gas home to California in the trunk of my car. I've been on the road for about two hours. I'm doing about 30 miles to the gallon for the, since the last fill up. So I'm gonna stop at this rest area for a quick break. And I'm about 30 miles east of Wilcox, Arizona. It's been a great trip so far. I just got to the city of Tucson and this is my best leg so far at 31.2 miles per gallon. I'm gonna stop to gas up one more time, although I have about maybe, I'll say about 150 miles worth of range. I could make it to, a, to the next town, but I just wanna stop, maybe stretch my legs, pick up some sushi, and then maybe drive all the way out to Yuma. And this is why I like to stop in main towns to get gas, because your chances of getting cheaper gas are greater in bigger towns than in the middle of nowhere. At 352, I believe this is my cheapest fill up, considering that we're at Chevron, which is one of the most expensive gas stations. Loving Arizona. Welcome back. We have left Highway 10, and now we're taking Highway 8 westbound that is gonna take me straight home. From here, it's about, maybe about four and a half hours, I wanna say. The next big town here is called Yuma, Arizona. And that's that. We just passed Tucson. I stopped for some sushi. It was delicious. And again, I had to pull over because the dogs were getting a little impatient. And now we're just westbound on the eight. Beautiful scenery, pretty uneventful ride. Cars behaving great. I will say that it's averaging about high 20s. The last leg was pretty good. It's, it was like 31 miles, 31.2, and this one is 30.6 so far. I anticipate that it's gonna break the 31 mile per gallon mark. Probably gonna take about seven gallons, and the price here is 394. Uh, entering California is gonna be at about 450 at least. So I'll be saving what? Maybe about three dollars. Not bad. Some of you may be wondering how comfortable or uncomfortable this car is for longer drives. And it's actually pretty comfortable because it has great visibility. The only thing that I'm gonna give this car is that even though it has lumbar support, it's not too aggressive, it's kind of flat. So right now my tailbone is chattered. Um, but I've been on the road for, I think, over 12 hours. And we have arrived at our destination, safe and sound. The miles per gallon for the last leg was 29.5. Not bad considering we went over the grade that is between El Centro, California and San Diego Alpine. So it's got some sort of elevation. So it drops a lot, but then you go downhill and then you make up for what you lost or some of what you lost. And I kept it, kept it pretty conservative this time. Uh, most of my leg was around 70 miles an hour. Uh, maybe sometimes I went up to 75 miles an hour. So as you can see, I got 29.5, which is pretty good. Amazing what a car with 224,000 miles can do 17, 18 years later after he left the showroom. Thank you so much for making it this far into the video. These are my stats, 1600 miles traveled, 
fuel, it was about 56 gallons and the cost was $220. And when it comes to the miles per gallon average, it says 28.73, but remember that I left the TSX running for very long periods of time throughout my trip. So I anticipate that now that I fixed the starter, I should be able to get over 30 miles per the gallon without a problem, especially in long trips. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. My name is Juan Carlos. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing for more related content. I'll see you next time.